How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Alex Plays Fishing Planet. And um, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so excited that I'm actually sitting down for a recording session. This is episode two in this particular set, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an extended license to go for a pike, and I certainly don't have the gear nor do I have the license to go for gar. Uh, but we're going to be going for some bass, we're going to be going for some catfish, and maybe a surprise fish um, or two. But I'll show you some panfish locations, I'll show you some catfish locations, and some bass locations. Maybe, uh, well hopefully we don't pull out any pike, because uh, I don't have a license for those guys. Um, what I could do uh, to be on the safe side, I'm going to Go for licenses. I'm gonna look for an advanced Missouri license, and it's only gonna cost me uh, fifteen dollars for a day. Now, this isn't uh, an in-game fishing day. This is for like twenty-four hours of real time. So, um, definitely worth it to uh, pick up the licenses so that you don't end up with a fine. Because that fifteen dollars uh, could save me, you know, a hundred dollars worth of fines for catching a prohibited fish. So, let's go ahead and head into Missouri into the Mudwater River. So we're gonna start with... Hmm, we're gonna start up here in uh, Catfish Haven. We might hit Pike Challenge, we might hit Last Songs of Summer, but Missouri is gonna be one of those that I'm probably gonna spit up, or uh, split up. So we'll go for some panfish and some catfish in this particular episode. So let's go fish. All right, and here we are, the Mudwater River in Catfish Heaven. So you might you might ask yourself, you know, what what the heck is Catfish Heaven? <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, actually, I started off in in the wrong area, but we should still be able to get some uh, some good panfish here. So let's go ahead and switch, and we got ourselves our our float rod and. We're gonna make a cast right out, right out next to these reeds, and see if we can't maybe dig up some some panfish here. Oh yeah, pretty much right away. Right away we got some action. They really like, uh, they really dig these red worms here. Oh, blacktail shiner. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just uh, add you to the fish stringer. Let's see what else we can pull out of here. Might be able to uh, to uh, get some some bluegill, maybe some crappie. Already got some more action. Let's see what else we can pull out of here. You gonna take it? There we go. A little blunt nose minnow. <laughs> you little jerk. <laughs> So we pull out a blunt nose minnow. That's actually only the second one I've ever caught of one of those. They seem to be a maybe a little bit rarer of a of a bait fish. But as you can see, this river is chock full of bait fish. Where there's bait fish, there's predatory fish, and uh, we'll have to definitely get to some of those. But for now, let's see what else. What else can we? Uh, what's can we dig out of here? Come on now. I got something good for you. I'm gonna do that like every single episode. Oh dang it! He got my bait. Let's give that another try. We should get near instant action because there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of action happening near these uh, weeds. And these these panfish they like to take cover in in weeds and pads and all sorts of places. Let's see. What do we get this time? Blacktail shiner. Well, you're not you're not what I'm going for. So, let's uh let's change positions here. We're going to hit last songs of summer. All right. Nope, nope. Last songs of summer, please. Okay. Now, is this is this the spot? 
yeah, this is the spot. There's uh, a lot of good spots right, right around here. But we're going to go ahead and go into precision casting mode. And the reason I want to do that is I want to get right by these pads. I don't want to be on them, but I want to be right next to them. I cast on the wrong side of them. Let me reel that back in and try again. Now, float this particular float rod doesn't have the... Uh, the greatest casting and I haven't upgraded my float equipment this is actually the uh, one of the two starting float rods and so you don't you don't need anything fancy to do pan fishing or catfish and I'll tell you what now we're just gonna let that float kinda sneak by the pads Let's see if maybe we can pull out something something a little bit more exciting than shiners and minnows We're taking some of that slack. There we go. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe you make it a liar out of me. <laughs> Freaking blunt nose minnow, man. Let's get up right next to right right up next to those pads. Let's see if maybe we can get something aside from a shiner and a minnow. Come on now. I'm going to get on to a little bit of catfishing today, maybe. Yeah, we see you. We know you're hungry. It's nice and early in the morning. It's a good time for, uh, good time for panfish. If the panfish would behave. Looks like a, another little guy, a common shiner. So we've caught a lot of different shiners. <laughs> All right, um, let's try, actually, you know what? Let's try, let's try doing a pitch right here next to these reeds. Maybe we'll have a little bit better luck next to the reeds. And then we'll try doing a little bit of catfishing. Once we hit about the 10 minute mark, we'll try some catfishing. I see some action. I'm gonna reel in a little bit of that slack. Now we're right next to the reeds. So we're, we should be in a, should be in a panfish hot spot. Could potentially put the bait a little bit lower, maybe 15 inches. Let's see if maybe that would help. I'm not entirely certain. Oh, someone just pulled in a trophy channel catfish. All right, let's bring this back in. That's that's too close. And we'll give her we'll give her a good pitch. Right next to the reeds. That's like perfect. I'll see if we can't pull something out of here. I've had good luck catching uh, white crappie off of these weeds in the past, so I'll give her a go and see how she does. I just gotta wait for that panfish to take it. I know he wants it. We know he's hungry. We got some good for you. Definitely got some good for you. Come on. Quit playing with your food. <laughs> Son of a biscuit, man. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go ahead and change gears. Uh, they're being a little bit, um, they're being a little bit stingy this morning. All right, so we're gonna have to change tactics if uh, we wanna catch some catfish. So let's go ahead and set everything up. Well, we're gonna, s the, I've had the best luck at Catfish Heaven, setting my depth to 90. And using a variety of baits, uh, pet food, cheese, and um, you know what? Let's actually grab some bait, some fresh baits. Let's uh, let's grab some small cut baits. 
Let's grab like 20 small cut baits. And we'll run some small cut bait instead of uh, instead of the pet food. And I'm gonna have to change out my slip float, so we'll go with a uh, with a chubby, and we'll run a a one aught hook. Actually, we'll go with a two aught hook. I haven't tried a two aught hook. We'll try something a little bit different from my normal, and see uh, see how we do. And we're running that, we're running that six pound uh, braid in the green color. That looks good to me. So let's let's see what we can get. We're just gonna go ahead and pitch it out right in front of us here, at Catfish Heaven, and uh, we're gonna let the bait and the float do the work for us. Except I'm at the wrong time of day. Gosh dang it. <laughs> I also want to set my drag to four. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm not going to type in chat, we're going to wait till 10 o'clock in the morning instead of uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. And this is when the catfish, I find, start coming out. It's right about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then, yeah, we'll just give it a pitch right out in front of us. So we've got our tackle set up. We've got our bait wet. Now we're just gonna go ahead and wait. Using that two aught hook, so this could this could take some time. Now number four hook is I think is what I started using was a number four hook, and then I moved it up to a number two hook, and then a number one hook, and then a one aught. I haven't tried a two aught before, so alright. We got something a little bit hefty. I'm going to go ahead and pop the drag up to five just so we can uh, get some extra power. Let's see what we pull out. There we go. Got ourselves a five pounder, 21 and a half inch channel cat. Real nice fish right there. Real nice fish. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw it out again. Some more small cut, uh, cut bait on that two aught. Now, the reason I'm using the two aught is to. Um, Hopefully keep the uh, the young channel catfish from uh, biting. But if you're just starting out and you don't have um, the six pound braid yet, or if you don't have you know um, a five pound drag spinning reel for your float rod, uh, then you're gonna wanna use probably a number four hook and a cheese, and then you get more bullheads, um, stuff like that. And I will go ahead and buy some cheese if I don't have some on me. And we'll put on a number four hook to maybe pull out some bullheads. But I want to see if maybe we could, we can get a real fight on our hands with a, with a bigger cat. All right, we got some, we got some play action on the small cut bait. Let's see if he's going to take it. There we go. I think it's going to be a little guy. Yeah, it's a little black bully. There you go. Even with a two-aught, you can still pull out the uh, the bullheads. And uh, we'll give her we'll give her another pitch out here. And then we'll uh, we'll try for we'll try for some some other fish. We'll give this one more go. See if maybe we can't pull out a trophy or something today. That'd be really cool. Okay, we do got we do got some pretty immediate action here. Come on, guy. I got something good for you. Using a different bait. Going for a different fit. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's something. Here's something a little bit bigger. Engaging the reel. Uh Causing him to run, but let's see if we can't tucker him out a little bit. This is this is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be a good one, guys. For sure, this is gonna be a good one. Come on. Yeah, reeling is uh, just giving him some more room, so we're gonna have to let him tucker himself out. Yeah. 
Yeah, we, we still can't bring in the reel right now. Got a lot of tension on the line and the and the rod. Let's see. There we go. There we go. He's starting to tire out a little bit. All right. What did we get this time? Oh, just a little four pound cat. I was hoping for something a little bit bigger, but we'll take it. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, switch gears. But uh, we're gonna stay in catfish heaven, actually. Uh, all we're gonna do is uh, change locations. Oh no, no no no! Are we gonna stay in catfish heaven? No, we're not gonna stay in catfish heaven. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, Last Songs of Summer. And in Last Songs of Summer, we're gonna take this path here and our non-walking shadow, and we're gonna come right over here. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna bust out the uh, good old spinner, and we're gonna change out to a uh, half ounce casting spoon in red and white. Yep, tackle weight is definitely optimal, which is good. And now, oh wow, this rod, this rod is gonna just seriously haul some butt over there. A little bit over uh, half power. That's going to get us clear across the Dagon River. Now we're going to do some uh, lift and drops. See what else we can pull out of this river. Now hopefully we can get a drum or a large mouth on this number two. Could always uh, break out my ultralight so I could throw something a little bit lighter. Might not be a terrible idea actually. All right, nothing on that pass. Um, and I think I know why. Let's go ahead and uh, fast forward here to five o'clock in the morning. And we're gonna extend our stay for five dollars. We made 39 buckaroos. It's not too terribly bad at all. Get ourselves a nice little cast. There. Now we're now we're in more of the uh, the hot spot for this particular area. Now let's see what we can't pull out of here. Now I've had some luck casting at those reeds and doing a river crossing before, so. Let's see if maybe I can't have a little bit of luck. We had a bite, but I missed it. Let's go back to the lift and drop. My line's starting to accrue some damage from all the pike that this particular uh, rod and reel has seen. Pike are, pike are crazy, and we'll be showing you guys some pike and maybe some perch in the next episode when we head up to uh, New York. And then once we're done with New York, we'll do some more um, do some more targeted fishing. Right now I'm just kind of doing an overview of my fishing spots and some of the areas that I've caught some really nice fish in. There you go, get right by those weeds, 135 feet out. Not too particularly far, but this is where I pulled out some nicer looking fish before. So if we don't get anything on this particular cast, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the first episode. And I'll make a cut, and then I'll cut back in on the cast where I grab something. All right, I guess we're gonna we're gonna make a quick cut here, and uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. For you, it'll be 
fairly instant. For me, who knows, it could be 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. We got uh, we got something on the end of the line this time. Just switched up the uh, reeling technique to some stop and go. What do we got here? Oh yeah, look at you. Young little largemouth. All right, we'll throw you on for sure. Oh, Bassmaster achievement. Nice. Nice. All right, let's see. Let's see what else we could potentially uh, pull out of this lake. Now we're going to go right by this hardcover. A little bit of stop and go seems to be working right now with the uh, silver spinner. I've also switched to my ultralight and I'm running a four pound monofilament and uh, I'm running four out of uh, six drag seems to be pretty good oh man we are snagged something good this time all right that's that's like really damaging my reel Well, unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to cut this line. Because we can't yank her free. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm sure I want to break the line. So let's go ahead and uh, get that fixed up. Good thing we had a bunch of those casting spoons. This time we'll go... A little bit more left of, uh, of that hardcover, hey? So we're going to try lift and drop this time. We'll set our drag back to uh, four. Not entirely sure that spoon got stuck on. I've never actually had a spoon get so stuck that I couldn't unstick it. Yeah, see? You typically just pops right out but you know I guess that that's not always gonna happen well, let's do a little stop and go that seemed to work last time so we'll keep up the stop and go let's see if we, maybe we can't pull that other type of fish that they got over here that's hiding now I did a number to this reel but we'll be able to fix it uh, when we go back to town. Still got plenty of plenty of time during uh, hot spot time to pull something out of here. Looks like someone else had to break some line. That's the worst. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, do another cut if we don't uh, get something on this cast. And uh, hopefully I can show you that one other fish that I found fishing off of these reeds before. It's called a drum, and it's a killer fight. All right, guys, I decided to uh, cut back here in the middle of uh, this particular uh, catch, mostly because well, it's one heck of a fighting fish. And um, because I'd probably spent 12 or so minutes, if, yeah, 10 or 12 minutes, easy, um, with absolutely nothing happening 
at that one spot where we originally caught the uh, largemouth bass. And um, yeah, I just wanted to wrap up the episode here that, um, you know, once you can start catching cats, I wanted to give you guys a, a bit of a tip uh, that, yeah, once you guys can start, you know, efficiently catching catfish, uh, this is definitely the place to be uh, to level up until level 8 um, or even as much as 10 um, simply because catfish are really good EXP. And holy cow, what have I got on the end of this line? This must be you know, pretty pretty decent sized fish here. Alright, we got we got them coming in now. Looks like a, just a potentially an average sized cat. Yep, just an average sized cat, so we'll keep that. But yeah, catfish are you know really good at EXP, uh, especially in the early game. So once you guys can start catching them, even the young catfish and like the bullheads, especially like trophy bullheads, are pretty good experience. Um, and when you can start reliably bringing in the uh, regular sized catfish or even trophy catfish, there's there's some good experience to be earned here. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the episode there on that nice catfish catch. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my leave now. And in the next episode, I'm a little bit too tired to do three in a set. So in the next episode, um, I've got just enough money. We're going to... Yeah, we'll go ahead and fix that. <laughs> We've got just enough money where we can uh, head out to Emerald Lake and you know maybe check out some uh, more panfish and some actual northern pike, not just pickerel. So... Until the next episode, I will see you guys next time. Later, guys.